come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this magical mystery movie journey that is the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday in our quest for total universe domination. A little musical in that intro. Colin. Right? I know. Because, I mean, we're, energy. That's what we got. We're, we got energy. Because we were singing uh, Friday the 13th Part 5 before this podcast <laughs> started. Is that why? Because we are recording on Friday the 13th. Yes. We are. The jig is up. Uh, yeah. We were talking about the most cursed one of all yes. of them all, right? Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, we're all still alive. Yeah. Hopefully, dear listener, you're still alive, too. He survived. Um, well, at least as far as we know. No, well, yeah, this could be playing at someone's funeral. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, if it is, I mean, we still appreciate <laughs> it. If you go over to where we found us, hit the like, subscribe uh, button, give us a review, uh, because all that stuff uh, helps us get found by other folks like you. So uh, tonight we watched. Oh, first of all, these are the Internet Radio Superstars. Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by hmm. Holly. Her. <laughs> Her right there. Oh my God. Holly, what did we watch tonight? <laughs> we watched Alone in the Dark. The one with Christian Slater? Yes. No, uh, it's oh. not that one. Uh, not why that. not? You want to watch that one? Um, no. <laughs> I've never seen that one. I've never either. Yeah. I can't. No. But then I had never seen this one. So, <laughs> you know, you know from the year. 1982. 82. And directed by Jack Shoulder. Who we would know from. Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Which, see, oh. that's that thing we're talking about, revisionist history, right? Nightmare on Elm Street 2 was considered the worst one of that series. Now everybody's like, no, it's uh, actually... Some- I actually kind of... I, I, I hate it less. I'll say that. Like, I watched it recently, and it wasn't as bad as I remember it. It does break, like, all the rules established by the first movie. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. But I will take that over, like, MTV Freddy later on. Oh, man. Yeah. All right then. Uh, Jack Scholler also gave us. Um, he did a lot of TV work. He worked on Tales from the Crypt and the TV The Omen. Um, Wait, The Omen Four Awakening is that a Jack Scholler movie? Uh, no, the TV movie The Omen. What? It was a TV movie. Oh, oh wait, yeah, yeah. And okay. also uh, oh, was the, the Tremors series. All right. Oh, nice. Too. Jack yeah. Scholler. That sounds like a disease. And, uh, like you arachnid. Get. I think yeah, he Jack Scholler. It sounds oh, like a fake name. The, yeah. Well, he it also, sounds like an Alan Smithy Jack, type. Jack Shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Am I wrong? Ah, Frank he, Elbow. Good to meet you. He also did the Hidden, right? I think so. The much uh, heralded, heralded, heralded. Thank heralded? very much. Much heralded movie, sci-fi. It's got like Kyle MacLachlan pre Twin Peaks. The Hidden. Body swapping aliens. Yeah, the bounty oh, hunters. Cool. Let's down. watch it. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark. Why did you pick this? Movie? Yeah, you'd never seen this. I'd never seen this. What the hell brought you to this? I I found it online. I don't remember where I saw it. It might have been on a Don't a, trust the internet. It Holly. might have been on Facebook or something. But I was like, okay, it's an eighties slasher movie with like, you know, escape mental patient and it's got Jack Palance and Donald Pleasance and Martin Lando. Martin Lando. Like why would we not watch this? Yeah. That, I, I see on, on paper the appeal. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like this it's dream like, cat. I can see it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always remember I saw the uh, the video box from it, which I think is like I think you see a diner in the background. I'm curious and to see like what this looks like. A I'm guy's leg, and he's got you know uh, alongside he's carrying an axe. It's like an axe mm-hmm. in the foreground. It's a very misleading poster. Diner in the background. I think I think it's a diner. I mean, there was a diner in the cold open, but then we never out. saw it again after right. that. that right, good. right, right. Yeah. yeah, everything everything I saw about this, I saw all of the. Uh, I guess like the trigger moments. I saw like all the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, the few kills, and I saw ah. the, the babysitter sex scene. I saw the apparition. I this saw, is in the trailer. I saw parts of the trailer, and then I saw like different like screen caps and, and different like reviews and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, right. That poster is amazing. That's yeah, a very misleading poster. poster. That poster is cool. amazing. Yeah. So I saw the poster. I saw all like the good stuff. I saw the cast, and I was like. Why would we not watch this? This right. sounds amazing. And then I saw like some reviews. People were like most underrated slasher movie. This is like my favorite Whoa. 80s slasher movie. I was like, Whoa. It's like, what? Why have I never heard of this? Why have we not watched it? On paper, it absolutely seems like the prime freak show movie. They're mm-hmm. out. Yeah. For blood. Mm. Don't let them find you. 
That's the the tagline. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. The the they're out. Dot dot dot. Yeah. For blood because there's a lot out. of ellipses. Oh, they're out at the hospital. The... Out yeah. for blood. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Get it. I sure do. Was this filmed in England? No, New Jersey. Yeah. There were parts of it that looked like they were trying to like cover up stuff, and I was like. Hmm. I got some like slaughter high vibes from a couple scenes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and I was like, I thought that little girl had like, like a Scottish accent at one point. Yeah, I'm like, What's like happening here, <laughs> especially towards the third act when they're all inside like the one building. I was like, this feels like it could be a house in like a field in England. You yeah. know? Yeah. Like, hmm. Because we've seen so many of those movies. Mm-hmm. That is there a movie called England A Field in England? Yes, there is. Okay. Yeah. I was gonna That's say. a Ben Wheatley movie. Who, <laughs> is uh, it? Oh, Free Fall, nice. Or F- Free Fire. Yeah, yeah. Right. And High Rise and... Uh, and and uh, uh, Kill List. Kill which, List. You got to see Kill yeah, List. Kill List is good. Yeah. I like it. That's Sightseers. Like is that, yeah. Sightseers. Um, ben Wheatley's device. You don't really thing. need yes. to see uh, A Field in England, though. Well, I don't know. Is, it, is it? Is there murder? What is it? No, it's like... Uh, it's people just you, running through a field all happy and shit? <laughs> they get... They they eat mushrooms and they kind of go nuts in a field in England. Ooh, what do you cool. mean by nuts? Uh, how nuts can you go in a field in England? They experience visions. Yeah, uh-huh. when you're on a hallucinogen, yeah, you go pretty movie, nuts. It was made for like five thousand bucks or something like that. I believe black it. And white. That's because the yeah. probably just went. All right, we're They'll gonna have, have mushrooms. Witch, witch finder hats, and we got cameras. Yeah. Um, all right, so Alone in the Dark has, uh, yeah, I mean, we were talking, but the, mm-hmm. it's the great cast, I guess, is cast. what you kind of yeah. go. So at this point in time in the movies, it seemed like, I'm trying to track this back, and I think we were talking about this maybe on a previous episode, but mm-hmm. why did we have these um, kind of, well, it's not the twilight of their career, but you know, clearly these actors are guys who have moved into the late third you know, of their career, yeah. right? End up in these headlining these horror movies. Mm-hmm. Did this start with Gregory Peck in The Omen? Yes. Like he lent yeah, the gravitas to The Omen and then everybody's like, we got to put, you know, we got to find some older dudes and put them in all these movies. That could be. That, I think I'm it, trying to think of another one, but that's. Well, that sounds. Uh, what sounds right. Omen was what, 76? Right. Yeah, I doubt it was. Made right much difference earlier than and that, and then but after that, it's like pretty much it's like, well, we got to get Donald Pleasance and put him in Halloween, and you know, I mean, like it was just a, a series of all these guys who would do these, uh, you know, basically, it's like they work for a little bit. This one, it seemed like they, the guys are in it for quite a while. Yeah, they mm-hmm. have a lot of screen time, but mm-hmm. three of them. I mean, Jack yeah. Palance, like or four. Sorry, right? for a little bit. But you say three. That. There's three. There's three. Palance, Pleasance, and uh, Lando. Lando yeah. Okay. Um, maybe. We should get a little bit of the setup to this movie. Mm. What What's going on here? Well, when it opens, we don't know. It's a very unclear beginning. But essentially what we've got here it's is... It's an odd beginning. It's an odd beginning. We I, had no... Because coming into this, really we had know. no idea. Yeah. I knew nothing about this movie. Decided right. to look nothing up coming into this. And so I didn't know if, like, is this supposed to be... Are we looking for funny here? or Because, you know, it all depends down here on the freak show. Yeah. We get some weird shit, and I don't know whether to <laughs> laugh at it or start taking it seriously. Well, especially, like, the poster is really similar to, like, the Blood Rage poster. Mm. And like style and tone and like yeah, like this was a whole weird era of movies where like we would make really serious posters for a movie that maybe isn't so serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's a slasher era, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, every but everything has like a bloody mm-hmm. yeah implement on it, and and then there's the woods, the moon, and a house with the yeah, lights it's on. Dark, and you mm-hmm. see a hand or a foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always it. remember like for some reason this movie, even though I've never seen it. Until tonight. Thank you very much, Holly. You're very welcome. Crossing off. Went this whole time. Yeah, that's right. Bucket list. Uh, is forever linked in my mind to the the one for, uh, the the poster to my um, happy birthday to me. That one's a pretty good one. You seen that one? Oh, it's yeah. Like, with the, the poker shish kebab. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The shish kebab in the mouth. I don't know if they were like, they weren't hmm. side by side in a video store mm-hmm. shelf. So I don't know. But they were, it was around the same time, and that's a pretty damn good poster. That's too. a good poster. Mm-hmm. And you go like, what's going on in this movie? Yeah, so yeah. what happened to get, get to that fucked point? Up. Yeah. Um. All right. So there's this cold open pre-title sequence, right, the, which is just fucking bizarre. It's very bizarre, and you give no context, and it doesn't really make any sense at all. Um. Again, I didn't know whether to laugh or not. Right. Yeah. What's going on here? Because, yeah. You know. Uh. Uh. Everyone's very serious at the beginning. Um. Lady goes back to put in an order, and everything's on fire. Yeah. Uh, whole kitchen's on fire. Whole kitchen's on fire. Is this hell? Uh. It seems like we're in some sort of surreal moment going on here. Yeah. We've got Martin Lando at. at the the counter right in a diner 
Would you like coffee? Yeah, everyone's very robotic, no. very like pod people. Yeah, it's very stilted dialogue. Yeah. I'll have the usual. This, this is the second movie in a row now that we've watched had a cold open with a diner kitchen on fire. That's very true. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that, when we saw the thing on fire, it was like, this is a dream. It's, well, welcome yeah. to March. Yeah. But you know, ironically, like if you didn't know what this, if you just sat down and watched it, I'm like, is this like some kind of CIA thing going on here? Are they right. talking in code? Like he's going to slide something across the table in a second? And it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Here's the information. Thanks. It's like, this is one of those things where like, you know, you go in and Say hey, Mabel, can word. you lock the door? Yeah, right? We got to talk. Then Mabel brings out a fish on a plate. A goddamn fish. Like, yeah, what? I was, I'm, I was trash. already. <laughs> this thing's huge. I saw that slide across the screen and I was like, I'm already lost. Mm-hmm. I already yeah. am lost. In yeah, this, and like, I don't know how I'm going to get catch this train that's speeding full ahead, you know? But once the frog <laughs> comes into the picture, then you're kind of like, oh, okay, right. I'm, yeah, I'm with this. Yeah, the frog no. brought me back. You're right. <laughs> 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 I was out till the frog came out. I was like, almost I like, that. did I miss something crucial to where we need to start this movie over when that frog came on screen? I was like, wow, I missed more than I even thought I did. Yeah. Like- <laughs> so basically what this is, it's a dream sequence and it is, uh, oh, and Donald Pleasance does show up as a, as a cook right? with a gigantic, it's not even a cleaver. It's, it's like a piece of mirror. <laughs> it's it very is, shiny. It is, a, it is very shiny. <laughs> Some kind of weird wavy sword, and uh, yeah. uh, they they it's end up a bottle opener hoisting and these chains hoisting Martin Landau up by his feet, and then uh, we get the impression that Donald Pleasance is about to cleave him in two right down the middle. Clefton and Twain. He wakes up. Martin Landau does, and we're like, okay, so that was basically a dream, mm-hmm. trying to illustrate the psychology. Of a character that we haven't even met yet. Basically, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I get that, you know, A Nightmare on Elm Street also started off in a dream, but you're at least you're illus- you're introducing the character of Tina and then you're introducing Freddy Krueger, mm-hmm. you know, right? Yes. Um, I think he's told he's going to cleanse the earth for God or something like that. There's some bit of dialogue in there or something. Yeah, because Martin Landau is the preacher. Yep. He's known as the preacher. But we don't know who the fuck he is, what this yeah. has to do with anything. Is this supposed to be scary? It, is it all... funny? It's just weird. And Questions there's, there's, we'll be asking there is a bit for of another dialogue, 20 minutes. But we're all so confused that I think we don't really pay attention to that. You know, we're not taking it little bits and being like, okay, that's something to remember later. No, like, I, was no still yeah, exactly. the, right? I was still looking at the frog. <laughs> And wondering why he wasn't trying to get the fly that was walking right next to him. In yeah, that shot. I'm still like three scenes behind the, where this movie's at right now, trying to mentally yeah. catch up. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, you dropped in the deep end with no paddle. And yeah. this, uh no paddle, no floating. Yeah. Into, and I don't think there's a the lifeguard end, no on duty right. either. With Martin Landau, he's not going to help you. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, that guy's got a face. I mean, it's a face, a meant face. for horror face. films. Uh, I don't know. Did he do a whole lot of horror movies? Uh, he should have. He did. Um, Looks like the fucking dude from. I mean, Guys too. he was even more sinister looking when he was younger. I think than he was as he got older. Mm-hmm. Right, because then he's an old man. You expect his face to kind of be like stretchy and droopy and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, but it's that way when he's yeah, younger. He's like, I've never uh, seen him young. Well, wasn't he uh, North by Northwest? Isn't he? He's one of the guys like yes. chasing Cary Grant across. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's pretty. Mm-hmm. He's got a look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Made for horror movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, Did you guys know he was in an episode of Entourage? I believe it. That wouldn't surprise me, though. He seemed pretty hip, you know, toward the end after the whole Ed Wood thing or whatever, yeah. the X Files yeah. movie, and you know, he did a bunch of uh, a bunch of films there toward the end of his. I career. think that's one of the ways that people associate him with horror is that he played Bella Lugosi. Right. right. You want to hear the best casting for him in his entire career? Yes. He played J. Howard Marshall in an Anna Nicole Smith uh, biography really? movie. Yeah. He's got the same vampire face as J. Howard Marshall. <laughs> it makes total sense. The old sense. guy she married? Yes. <laughs> the guy that looked like a corpse when she married he him? He did. Yes. I've seen yeah. those pictures. That's he played funny. that guy in a TV movie about her life. Wow. That's funny. great casting. That's fantastic. And he yes. won the Academy Award or was nominated he for it. He won for yeah. Bella Lugosi. Because okay. there's two Academy Award winners in this movie. What what uh, movie was he, did he play Bella Lugosi? And Ed, Ed Wood. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Who's the other Academy Award winner? Jack Pounds. For, one for? City Slickers. Uh, was he like or Shane or whatever? <laughs> he was remember. in Shane, right? He was the guy who kept for... on needling Shane way back in the day. He did. 
Yeah. Come back, Shane. I don't remember what he won for. Jack Plants, I think, was in Without Warning somewhere in the late mm -hmm. 70s mm -hmm. about the alien dude. It's like a forerunner for the Predator. If I'm remembering the right movie, <laughs> he had things that he'd throw on, sticky things that he'd throw on. Yeah, but yeah it was an alien hunter from another but planet. I agree with Sean. He will forever be Curly slash Duke. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Right from City Slickers. Yes. Um, <laughs> he won for City Slickers. Did That's he really? right. Okay. Yep, I thought so. Did he really? Best supporting actor. Fantastic. That was when Jack Palance like got out on stage and did like one arm push ups on at the Right, Oscars. yeah, he did. He won it and then he got down to one arm push ups. That's and amazing. Then, yeah. That was ten years after this movie. Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll always remember him from Batman and the Jack. Yeah. You are my number one. Guy, <laughs> he's a fucking weird way of talking. Yeah, Jack Palance, does. you guys are he too does. young to remember this, but I will always associate Jack Palance uh, with the TV version of Ripley's Believe It or Not, where he was the host and he was creepy as fuck because he I talked like that. that. <laughs> I remember that show. Yeah. <laughs> this week on, on Ripley's Believe It. Or not. I can't believe he would have enough breath to host anything. Yeah, he's always. <laughs> I don't like feel that. like he's getting enough air at any point. Like uh, he was in Tango and Cash too. Wasn't yeah. he? he was. Tango. He was. He yes. was the bad guy. Yes. Wait, is he, he put the mice the in mice. the little mice. Oh my god. Tango. I, how I wish we I could go back in time. That to was the Tango and Cash episode. It was at the same year. That was before City Slickers. He was like he was having this <laughs> renaissance of you know movies with Batman, Tango and Cash. That's because someone looked and went. You're over the top. <laughs> it's the 90s. Be in this canon in film. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. We need you. Fantastic stuff. Uh, and then, of course, we have Donald Pleasance mm -hmm. coming off of uh, Donald Pleasance is an actor who will take any job. He's an actor. Like. Yeah. Any job and working just, actor, we're saying. <laughs> He's just like, oh, yes, I can do that. Yes. Yeah. But then he usually tries to figure out, like, what can I bring to the part? I mean, this is after. His success of Halloween, mm. right? This is after Halloween 2. This is after Escape from New York and the big budget Dracula and well, however 30 odd movies that he made each year. Yeah. Um, uh, I was trying to figure out like what he was doing in this movie because in Dracula, he's eaten in every fucking scene that he's in. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. That's when he's just high. I think so. He's just high. He's just Yeah, I was like, I gotta high. say, regardless of what we think of this movie, I am digging him in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of nuts. He's kind of nuts. Yeah. Uh, I liked him as we went on. I liked him more and more as we went on in the movie. Yeah. Because I'm just like, okay, I, f I figured out what he was doing later like, on. I'm with you. Because we got I'm in the beginning you. where I didn't know what anything that was happening. Right. So I'm just like, I don't know how to take him. <laughs> but once we got into him, I'm just like, all right, I like what he's doing. Yeah. I, I like wish we could do this a little yeah. bit more. I like what you're bringing to the table. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I agree. We're talking about the 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 actors with the characters. Donald Pleasance is the um like uh head He's like the head doctor at a mental institution. Right. Yeah. And the other guys, uh Landau and mm -hmm. Palance are the patients, but they're not the only ones. There's two more that are uh, uh of significance. Right. There's one Well, they each have their own thing they have their own thing yeah Palance was like what he was supposed to be like a, a the vet yeah he's yeah, yeah the vet, vet the preacher the molester and the bleeder yeah yeah and they're all they're all on the third floor which is the psycho ward I think yeah. that was a verse in bye bye Miss American Pie the vet the preacher the no. and the bleeder <laughs> the bleeder we never get to see his bleeder. face he's uh he's a an enigma to mm -hmm. us because he doesn't like to be seen, so he's always turned around from mm -hmm. the camera, which right. is holding his head. Yeah, you gotta you, know, you remember that for later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, <laughs> but apparently he he killed uh, just people, and yeah. then whenever he does, he gets a nosebleed. Yes. Mm. So that's how you know he's just the like bleed. Valentine. Yeah. yeah. How they totally saw this movie. <laughs> how did they know that? Did they say how they knew that? Did someone see him bleed from the nose he multiple was, times? He, he had been caught. Yeah, I think right. It was in the newspapers or something. They how said. Did they know? It's witnesses. Yeah, witnesses. Just multiple witnesses seeing yeah. him bleeding from the nose? Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Landau, his shtick is uh, he likes to light the churches on fire. fire. The preacher, yeah. He burned his congregation. Right. It's like, he oh, just has the unfortunate uh, of lighting them on fire with people in it. Sean's Jack Palance, spot on Palance right now. <laughs> does, does well. He has one of the like two or three great lines in this mm. movie. Uh, Palance going for full Academy Award. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, says uh, it's like I'll get it somewhere. What's the doctor's name? Doctor Porter. Potter. Doctor Potter. <sighs> 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 hey, 
Abbey Trails. <laughs> now that was about as uh, an abbreviated uh, version of it. Yes, <laughs> goes on for thirty more minutes. It's a lot of breathing. Yeah. It was amazing. I wonder if you like edited all that down, how much shorter this movie would be. I I'll think it'd be bet. significantly shorter. Oh, yeah, 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 shorter. yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody just behind the hair going. Yep. <laughs> Got it. All right. Thanks, yep. Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Take out all the breaths and ellipses he takes in the middle yeah. of words. He's kind you of, know. A, yeah. This guy, he's a character. And then uh, then finally, we got the uh, the, the child, mole- yeah. the child rapist, right? Yes. Yes. And he is familiar he makes because, the movie not fun. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> Just but his, he, that guy, he was in uh, The Running Man. Remember? It was, I'm trying to think. Was he Sub-Zero? No, he wasn't Sub-Zero. Oh, he was, is he the big guy? The one who the... sang the opera. Because I'm looking at him. I'm like, ah. that guy looks fucking familiar to me. And I'm like, that's right. it. He's The Running Man. Okay. Yeah. So. Big dude. These guys are all contained. Mm-hmm. In Electricity, a, man. What are we talking about? Electricity. <laughs> what do you mean? It's the only thing that keeps me from them. Yeah. This is explained to us at least twice. Uh-huh. What's Electricity, his Electricity, Holly. Yeah. Electricity is what pe- holds people in this third floor. Mm-hmm. Right. It's an agreement, which is like, there's no bars. You got a fucking electric door. These people are locked in. There's no bars. Yeah. Fuck you. Well, it yeah. turns out they're not locked in. I know. Not really. Well, Pleasance is an unorthodox physician. He has like mm-hmm. an odd, uh, well, everything about him is Everything's odd. Everything's odd. But he has uh, his treatment plan. Yeah, he tends to play into whatever delusion they have. Like, How does this treat like people? The re- like the receptionist, they let her be the receptionist even though she's actually a patient. Mm. Just because that was her job before. Yeah, or that's like, Lynn Shea from the Insidious movies. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Because this is a yeah, it's a New Line Cinema from Kerners and Kerners yeah. too. Okay, this was, <laughs> this was the first movie produced by New Line Cinema. Yeah, yeah, right. So Rob Robert Shea ran Bob that Shea. studio yeah. for a mm-hmm. while, and you can feel the influences. Like this is the thing. Like yeah. the the pre he, he helped write this movie. Yeah, yeah. There's like the and then the, once they sold it, like the the studio kind of has like no real uh, identity, really. Mm-hmm. You know, after the because I think he was with it even through like the Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. It was only like more recently that he got he did they oust him. I can't remember. They sold it to Warner Brothers. I he feel retired like, or something like that. I don't know. I feel like it was taken away from him somehow. I could have that completely wrong. But those older movies do have kind of like a family made thing because I see the same names like Shara, Sarah Risher and yeah. uh, Rachel Talalay and, you know, all these different people that you recognize from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. They even uh, go so far as to name the town here is Springwood, yep. which I'm like, OK, somebody grew up in Springwood and then. Brought that over to their Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, you know, when they were telling Wes Craven, like, hey. Yeah, you got to have a town. You got, you got Crystal Lake, you got Springwood, you got Haddonfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Texas, all of Texas <laughs> goes to Texas, Texas Chance on Massacre. Yeah, they I know. Get a they whole state. state. Where they are. Just They're just Texas. like Travis County, but we don't know where. Nah, it's, it's a whole cr- state of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, it really should have been Florida. I mean, that movie's the probably Florida. Come, the flo- there, is, there, is there a movie just massacre. called The Florida Man? I copyright it if it's not 2020 Saturday Night Freak Show. You have Florida options Man. for the Florida Man. There's so many Florida Man. I know. We make an anthology of I Florida know. Man stories. And then we connect them? <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. All right. The copyright Florida Man it. anthology. <laughs> this, is it's this is actually yeah. a really good this idea. A great idea. Shit. All right. I'm going to Google this later to see if this is a thing. <laughs> you fuckers don't take that. <laughs> yeah, come legally up with a good binding. Too. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Story. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I think the wraparound Did is. Did I hear uh, somebody was doing this? No, oh, I hope not. Who's doing this? Wrap around's a news story where it says, you know, yeah. we start with news story. A Florida man did yep. this today, and then yeah. we end it again with <laughs> mm-hmm. the Florida man again. Florida Fuck! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like this idea. <laughs> Shit! Cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> this one's too good to go over the air. Yeah, because somebody somewhere is gonna do it. I mean, somebody's got to. Somebody's writing this script. I feel I'm too late. Well, um, I think maybe you. Are. We're gonna have to Google yeah. this afterwards. I think maybe you are. Um, Sean's Donald- like, let's stop right now and Google. Yeah, I- <laughs> <laughs> let's write this down. Well, Donald Pleasance has uh, another one of the other great lines in the movie. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that whole thing about the brain and the speed of the brain? No. He. Uh, I remember the last line. Well, his his thing is uh, a brain going too fast is insane. A brain going slow is sane, and a brain that stopped. Is God. 
Ah. High as okay. fuck. Okay, sure. Sure. Wow. That was amazing. You don't wow. remember that? That was like a showstopper. I felt we like had I was... that same conversation last weekend, <laughs> yeah. I think. I feel like I was forgetting the movie before it was even over with. Like as like yeah. like three scenes back, I'm already forgetting. Well. Yeah. Well, there's another uh whole subplot to this movie that uh that uh, introduces itself as a setup because as Michaela pointed out during the first like, I don't know, 10 minutes of the movie, she asks like what is this movie about? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it takes us a while to get to it. <laughs> yes, and it even does. when it starts to reveal what it's about, I didn't believe it. <laughs> I'm like, I really didn't. I'm just like, is this what we're doing? Because it seems so far from where we started. Right. It's like, we didn't start here. No. Now we're going into this territory, which is fine. But why did we waste all this but time I with this other stuff don't beforehand? don't believe you. Right. Right. The other stuff before being uh, Dwight Schultz, who I can't remember. I think this is before he was Murdoch, Mad Dog Murdoch. Was that it on the A Team? Right. He he's Lieutenant sure. Barclay on. I never Trump. watched oh. the Next A-team, Generation. So. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, we're we're not there. Okay. Um. Uh, for the Star Trek is another there. thing I watch, and it goes in and out of my brain immediately. Well, they know who I'm talking There's about. So it's Dwight it. Schultz from. Okay. No. Uh, he's a doctor. I did not grow up with the A Team. Coming to this mental institution to take over for another doctor who has uh, quit, mm-hmm. right? So not only is it him, but he like brings, <laughs> that's the crux of the movie right there. But he brings the baggage of like the second uh, half of the movie, which is he's got you know his wife is at home mm-hmm. with his daughter, and his sister is coming to town, right? Yes. And this is going to be the second, the back half of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. But do we know that in, at the beginning, or is this just like we keep introducing characters? Yeah, it's just right. kind of a hodgepodge because it goes back and forth between him, like being introduced at the hospital, and then his family and that dynamic. It goes back and forth in a very choppy way. Yeah. Yeah. Until they converge mm. violently mm. in the end. So, mm. and it is the end. Like we follow those two separate things going on there for a while. And yeah. then, I mean, I guess that's, you know. Is that the good way to do it? You got your two strands and they meet and they yeah. kind of, you know, they meet in a pretty good way, I would say. Like, that's when I was like more up for the movie, but, you know, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah but I think this is that goes back to that thing that we've talked about before, the plot engine, right? Yeah. It is better if you install the plot engine somewhere within the first 20 minutes in your act one, right? You, you have to feel that kind of propulsion, yeah. a question that needs to be answered or met. You have to have a clear idea of where you're going. Yes. And how you get there, everything gets broken, yeah. changed, and you have to it's, it's recombine to get, it again. It's hard to get momentum without that. I yeah, think it's right. Donald Pleasance's yeah. fault. Explain. Because in the first two thirds of this movie, he's just wandering around being high. Like he he's not he's I because I'm looking at him because he's Donald Pleasance. So I'm looking at him for some sort of propulsion. You know, the engine you say. <laughs> Donald Pleasance will say this. So I was that's kind of what I was that's I think that's why I was so messed up by this is because I was waiting for him to save us or to do something. And he's just like I'm just here, man. I'm sorry, it ain't gonna be me, man. I'm just <sighs> here, man. I was yeah. waiting for something to push him over the edge where he'd start yelling and he never really got something. to that point. Like well, I, I like my Donald Pleasance at eleven, you know, and Right. He just, he's the best when he's yelling. I didn't I was looking at both the doctors going, all right, which one's gonna start like taking us with? Like, yeah. Let's go. Well, Donald Pleasant. This is the Donald Pleasant from like the uh, what was it from Beyond the Grave mm. and uh, the uh, the Great Escape. That's that's that. It's not the uh, the worked up somber but right. like explosively yeah. worked. But that's up weird to Halloween have that in a Donald horror Pleasant. movie. The Happy it's, Donald Pleasant is weird. It's weird to have Donald Pleasant in a horror movie and not have him be like the driving force first of all, but also like not demonstrate any sort of like horror elements. You know, like he didn't ever seem phased by what was happening. Really. No. Like Again, it's just, maybe too relaxed. Because yeah, he's high it's a horror movie. Time. He's very right? relaxed. Is this supposed to be a horror movie? I don't really know. Yeah, like that's the other is. thing. Yeah, we it didn't. Is. We didn't know. Well, it, it does have some of the hallmarks of the slasher film, uh, but it's not really. I mean, I suppose you know it's taking the idea of the escaped mental patient right. and like going like, what if we actually made a movie, a sensitive look. <laughs> at the actual psychopaths. The music would have you believe. Oh, the music was just not right. That, that wasn't helping everyone it stay awake during right. this movie. I'll no. tell you that. A good score can take you a long way. 
Not a, a good score. score. It can put you right That's to bed. That's why I was asking if this was made in England because certain parts felt like a British like drawing room mystery yeah. show. Like some, you know, like their version of PBS, Acorn Media or whatever it's called. <laughs> mm, some yeah. like public access fucking detective boring ass show that has been running for 20 seasons. That's what it felt like at certain points in this movie. Yeah, it's like Father Brown. Well, there's yeah, a lot of Midsummer Murders. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Hey, so the, some of those are good. Well, wait, where are they? That's you're right. That's been going on for twenty years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So a lot of this is basically the Dwight Schultz character, Doctor Potter. Yep. Has to um introduce himself to these uh, psychos. He's going to treat them somehow. He his sister who They're, is in into- Colin. They're voyagers. That's right. We don't Not use psychos. the word psychopaths. Okay. That's it doesn't help in the healing process. To the psychopaths. Can't just call them patients. We got to go take no. it to yeah. the other no. extreme. He doesn't even believe. Donald Pleasance doesn't even believe. We're all in a fucking journey. Them, he doesn't even want them locked up. They got to be free range psychopaths who go out into the yard. Which <laughs> into is, they taste pool? better that way, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, this is where I was in this movie. I'm like watching this going like. This is all some kind of elaborate scheme. Uh, scheme. Right. Yeah. This, is, this is Shutter Schultz, Island. Yeah. Where Dwight Schultz is the crazy person. <laughs> totally something. Like, yeah. I was totally like, this is just going to be Shutter Island. This is what I was trying to figure out. Yeah. I'm just like, this, somebody's not who they say they are. We haven't seen this doctor that left. Mm-hmm. He's going right. to be dead somewhere. Or one of them is. Yeah, we haven't a seen the bleeder. Patient. Yeah, I thought Donald Pleasance was like a mental patient posing yeah. as the doctor. Yeah, or something yeah. Like yeah that. that's what I thought too. I was like, it's going to be Shutter Island. That's going to be the ending of this movie. Yeah. Uh-huh. No. And no. so you get caught up. I'm like, when's something going to point me in that direction? And nothing and ever it does. Never does. Nope. Even though you're watching all the signals and you're not getting them, and you're like, yeah. okay, he's just crazy, Donald Pleasant. Yeah, crazy doctor who's as crazy as his patient. So maybe that's uh, you know, <laughs> he's like, aren't we all crazy? Yeah, at the end. <laughs> right. But doctor, they've killed people. Well, we're all crazy. <laughs> you know? Like, what and he's like, like, who among us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's why I was like, here's this reveal's going to happen. That right. He is, and then. <laughs> right. They're, nope. setting no. <laughs> they're really setting it up for him to be like, start murdering people at some point. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. going to snap. Well, we uh, we know that, that they end up uh, when when sister comes uh, to town. Ah, uh, sister. She's a uh, punk rock scene. Asking about Rastafarians for some strange reason for wherever she's been. But clearly she is decked out like 80s punk and right. wants to go see this new band called the Sick Fucks Bravo. that are playing down at like the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. It's got a storefront window. Yeah, it it's was. It's storefront that's been turned into a punk club apparently. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, that's, I mean, you know. Actually, that makes sense. Did. Yeah, it really I does. I was like, yeah. for a punk venue, that actually makes a lot of sense. And they'd be like, can we break this window? Yeah, Punk. I was waiting for that, actually. Somebody Something. going through the window. But uh, we get, you know, they go there, and during the performance, by the sick fucks, uh, the power mm. goes out. This mm. movie is also, it turns out, an anti-nuclear power uh, movie. It sure is. Is it? I don't know. I- <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. why, why are we getting that? Where's that come from? Where's Is it just me? I mean, it just seems I mean, like... It's, I mean- the- yeah, no. It's, the director's probably just throwing his own little thing in there, or Bob Shea is. Yeah, I, I had didn't find anything about making that a crucial point to the plot or anything. But it was in there like a lot, yeah. right? Yeah. The Sister ir- is part of a like a movement. She paints like a poster at some point. They're going to go to a demonstration. Protest, yeah. They get arrested for protesting. Yeah. Uh, the whole I mean. idea that like apparently our security hinges on the ability of nuclear power to keep us safe, and when it like goes out because of sabotage or an act of God, it turns loose the most violent mm-hmm. members of our community into our community. I did find it really interesting though. This was I think the earliest example I've seen of someone like really talking about solar power. I was kind of surprised to see that in a movie from 1982. Yeah, wasn't that what he was talking about? At, was he talking about that at dinner yeah, or something like that? Yeah, dinner, talking about solar power and windmill energy. And windmill everything. energy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, I, was I, was like, I was just like, wow. I was surprised by that, yeah, too. Yeah, really? I was, like, wow. I was like, why is this movie telling us this? I was like, what, what could this possibly have to do with I didn't know. I, didn't, I, I, didn't, agree, I, I, I agree, but I was agree, yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Okay, let's move yeah, the fuck on and get this story going. I agree, but I was just surprised at hearing about that in yeah. 1982. That yeah, I know, right? Right? Yeah. 
That seemed very early to me. Well, this is like, it's a message, I suppose, that yeah. somebody's working into the subtext of their film. It would appear so. Yeah. Um, and but what would that message be, Colin? Uh, that we should all go to solar power and just because they talked about it in a scene. Oh, yeah, That's why. No, no it, higher reason than well, that. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm saying that it's just it's somebody's philosophy at the screenwriting thing, and they just kind of layer it in there. But you uh, know. I, I also think this is they're using this as uh, uh, Jack Plants is this is his mechanism. Power goes out. He has his theory. Power goes out again. He is it is finished. Well, Jack Plants uh, has dark. this. Um, it's not even like a, he has an, this psychotic epiphany. Yeah, while he's lying in bed one night, mm-hmm. that the new doctor has killed the old doctor. This is out of nowhere. Right. Which he is a voyager, so oh, wait, he, that'll happen. You know, paranoid schizophrenia that tends to happen. Yeah, <laughs> but it is kind of like okay, so this is what our plot's going to be then. Mm-hmm. Just dropped in out of, you know, it's like uh, parachuted in the middle of the movie. Yeah. And like the paratrooper that he probably was. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so when the power goes out and these guys escape, they mm-hmm. end up killing two uh, we all orderlies. Knew. We all knew. We were warned that electricity, only thing separating them. Yep. We That's knew. Right. Told a couple times. We, we were knew. not supposed to rely on it. <laughs> and we did. And look what happened. See? So. there. See the message? It's there. It's yeah. there. And then mass hysteria mm-hmm. erupts in this town. Within seconds. Which, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're talking cars are on fire. Dogs There's, and cats living together. <laughs> yeah. People are killing each other in the streets. Well, to be fair, that yeah, might have been the bleeder. But they were looting stores and yeah, they were stuff. I know. It's like somebody like, like flipped off crazy. the lights to go to bed and they're like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's free. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, let's just go take it. This is. Just because five mental patients escaped? I don't even think they knew that. No, they the didn't power realize. went out. The that power went out. Okay. It's oh just God. because the power's yeah. out. Because, <laughs> they, I'm telling you, this is a cautionary <laughs> tale yeah. that we rely too much. Electricity is what separates us from anarchy. Yes. When it's it all hits because the accelerator a little hard, a little quick. <laughs> and clearly, but, none of these people live in the Midwest during storm season. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, do you guys remember, like, yeah. it was a while ago now, but that summer, like, with that wind storm. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I didn't have, yeah, I was going to say, I didn't power for three days, and yeah. I remember it was, like, in the 90s and just being miserable. Yeah. I remember that. I remember yeah. having to go to my grandma's house to shower. Oh. Like, yeah. It was just insane. And, like, just being like, well, everything in the fridge is, like, dying. Mm. Yeah. Every, it's all dying. Dying. Like it well, won't last. This and guess what? Nothing even. was looted. No, <laughs> but no. I know what to do next time. I was out there with my tiki torch ready to light stuff on fire, but the wind kept on putting it out. <laughs> it's a strong wind. Uh, yeah, put out a tiki torch. Uh, <laughs> so, um, during this mass chaos, mm. the uh, I, I want to believe that it's just that little strip mall. <laughs> and there's regular traffic going on around it on the block. Like the rest uh, of the world is just normal. Perfectly, the rest of that town's perfectly fine. <laughs> just that little strip block is on fire. Everything else, mwah, Well, because everything's perfect. fine back at the house. I mean, uh, wait, was this, this is, yeah, this is, that was the night of, right? Yeah, because they get new clothes. Yes, they go and get new clothes. Right, so now we're not going to know who they are. The bleeder uh, puts on a hockey mask, right? Because mm-hmm. they go to a sporting goods store and puts on a hockey mask and kills someone by ripping their throat out with a garden one of those three pronged, was it the hoe, little yeah. hand hoe? Yeah, uh, it's the, the thing that groundskeeper Willie was using in Nightmare on Elm Street yeah, last that's week. That's absolutely true. <laughs> but bleeder hockey mask. Mm-hmm. This is like the same year as Friday the Thirteenth. This was part three. This is obviously just done for the trailer, right? Well, oh, they, they, yeah, they couldn't into... have known that it was. They couldn't have known that there Friday the Thirteenth was going to use a hockey mask when this movie came out. They would have both been in production at okay. around about the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's like still Phew. when they saw Friday the they're like, "Oh shit, that's going to help Jackpot. us." Yeah, <laughs> put it in the trailer. Yeah, <laughs> let's I don't go. Even know if, did Friday the Thirteenth Part Three use the hockey mask in a lot of its? I'm sure it must have been in the trailer. If we go back and look, it's one of those like one. Two, three. It's the countdown of deaths trailer. They must have shown him with I, the mask on. Maybe, maybe. But like the movie the itself shot. holds that off for a while. And I know I've seen a poster of him, you know, axing through like the window or whatever. Right. Right. <clears throat> um, but so this it's a weird movie fluke like, of the time. Only uses it for like one scene, really. It right. Does. Yeah. So if you saw that in the trailer, you'd be very disappointed because mm-hmm. it's not really important to this movie. Well, let me tell you, a lot of the stuff that's in the trailer. <laughs> 
Not so much in the movie. See, I haven't even watched yeah. it. Yeah. No, I didn't even watch the trailer. Like it's no, it's like the hockey mask, the apparition, like the tree kill. Like it's all that. Oh, yeah, Ooh, that apparition. apparition super misleading too. Oh, oh, oh man. What are you and, then, talking and that was about? part of that was part of um reading about it and deciding to pick this movie. I was like, I kept reading about this really cool apparition designed by Tom Savini. I was like, Yes, I'm in. And Oof. it was about three seconds. <laughs> three seconds. Yeah, what are you talking yeah. about? What happened? Uh, the sister has like a. The sister had a breakdown before. Yeah, the sister had a breakdown. She's had some mental Years health before, issues yes. in the past, and um, the stress kind of in- induces that to come back. So she has a bit of a hallucination, delusion, whatever, and she sees like a, a, a figure come through the window and like try to attack her. Mm-hmm. Um, then it comes like to the window, Jason. just pops up from the side. It, yeah, it pops <laughs> up. Because we can't afford to break a window yeah. or something. No. Breaking windows later, but. And I kept seeing stuff about like the, how cool the design was, and I'm like, "What are you talking about? It's like three seconds. How does yeah. anyone even see it? Yeah. Three seconds, and we were pretty sure it was a leftover Jason. That's Fairly what it looked sure, like. Yeah. Like kid yeah. Jason. Kid Jason. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty sure. All I know. And is they just had to know. give him credit because it's like we we used your Jason. Yeah. yeah. We, s- we found this in the garbage and we used it. Yeah. True or false? There was some kind of uh, behind-the-scenes overlap between this and the burning. That I don't know. Okay, Ooh, I thought I read that somewhere me. that like some of the crew well, like worked on both okay. or some. Okay. Yeah. I, I, all Go. I know is that uh, Tom Savini used Rice Krispies and soap to make the texture of the, the apparition. Man's a fucking genius. Really, is. Right? Is really is. Tom Savini. Go back That's why look. I was really yeah. excited. I was like, I can't wait to see this. Three seconds. Yeah. Was waiting. the burning our yeah. Tom Savini appreciation episode? <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, you should go back and listen to it. It's <laughs> or a good the episode. Show episode. Mm-hmm. We did yeah. the burning last year, creep show a couple weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, so there is like this whole subplot. Basically, the whole where where we go here with this is um that Dwight Schultz's family is home alone during the blackout, mm-hmm. right? Or they're not even home alone. The the guys get out and they're like gonna kill the doctor. So they ride around town in a van and try to run over the uh, telegram, telegram delivery yes. bicycle guy. When they still had those. And then they come to the house, and then the big dude shows up in the house and starts menacing the little girl with the pippy long stockings. Yep. She's yep. just a frightening-looking little girl. She's a weird girl. Yeah. And uh, we're like, oh, and this is where the movie is, like, going to go dark. Yeah, that's I was like, oh, shit. But it just kind of, like... You know, there's a scene of unease and it kind of papers yes. over uh-huh. that because Bunky, the babysitter, right. Bunky, the babysitter, that was a TV show in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be. Should have been. <laughs> Had to be. Full was- House, followed by Bunky, the babysitter. Bunky, the babysitter. Bunky, the babysitter was there during the, the original blackout. This is like day two. The blackout right. extends, right? There's no power. We got to find where these guys went. Uh, Dwight Schultz is at work and... Uh, Mom and the sister get arrested. Right. At the protest. They, which we don't okay. see because this is a low budget movie. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah, we jumped to that and I was just like, what I miss? Why yeah. are they in jail? I, if I couldn't think of it for a second. Well, I like the way that Bunky comes over. Like, can you go check on Bunky because we're in jail? Or can you go check on the little girl because we're in jail? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. She goes over. Little girl's asleep. This is after we're like. The fucking child molester was there. And was like, come yeah. up to your room and we'll play with the and scissors. I thought she was dead. Oh, yeah. I, was gonna I say, thought she was dead. I, was gonna I say, thought so, all, too. Did we all just think she was dead? Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought she okay. was staying yeah. over okay. just in the bed. I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to clarify that. Yeah. yeah. But Bunky is like, eh, she's sleeping. I'll just close the door really quiet. Like, I'm going to go to the phone and like dial. And I'm like, she's dialing a boyfriend, well, right? Of course. Dude comes over. There's a little hot and heavy scene in the bed where she see like, there's some, some noise. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, there's some noise. Well, I like the idea that first of all, uh, she immediately wants to bring her boyfriend over, have sex in like somebody else's bed yeah. with yeah. their kid in the next room yeah. sleep. Hey, they locked the door. Yeah. And then you hear a noise and your first thing isn't like, oh shit, the parents are home or oh shit, the little girl is up. No. Right. First thought is there's somebody <laughs> in the closet. dressed so quick. <laughs> hear a noise. I've done like, Nope. Shoot, done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah I've, I've I know. That. Just like, uh-huh. nope. <laughs> so. Hey. Just hanging. Yeah. Uh, but it turns out there's nobody in the closet. There's nobody. There's Thank a God. few too many misdirects in this movie. Yeah. But no cat. No cat. As, as it's, I think it's mentioned like twice. No cat jumps out of anywhere. No cat. Yeah, afford this a cat. May be How are you going to the... mention a cat and not show us one? Yeah. Come on. That's I think rude. it's the cat. It's just not. It's not even a cat in this movie. 
Did well, she, she know. say that? No, he said it's the cat. She said they don't have a cat. Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm just saying the movie as a whole yeah. to tease us with the idea of a cat and then not show us a cat. It's not See, fair. Yeah. yeah, they're damned if they do, damned if they don't. You meant, you put the cat in there. We're like, you sons of bitches. If there's no cat. You're like, where's the cat? You know yeah. what? I could have at least like grounded myself in that. Like, okay, I know what this is, right? Because like, Colin, you're saying, what did I? You you felt like, what did I miss? I have to, like that was my default setting for this movie. Is wait, wait, what did I miss? Wait, what did I miss? So like, yeah. at least the cat. That's something I am familiar. I can recognize and bring me back to the right. reality. Right. At that movie. point, you're just—it's just like color patterns that you yeah. recognize. You're just like, I oh, oh, I, I know that. this. Yeah, I know what that is. Okay, yeah. back where the house is on fire. Okay, yeah. I understand that too. You can't—you don't know what's going on, but you can follow it. You're just like I think we're near the end. But isn't well, we aren't even at this point. I mean, no. like this is—I mean, this scene is ridiculous because apparently there is a killer lurking under the bed. Who grabs the boyfriend must stab him to death? I don't know. I'm not sure. And then the knife starts coming up through the Which, mattress, and she's on top going. She like, has so much time to get so off this time. mattress. And you're just like so Bunky. You could make it just to the door. Jump off jump the bed. Run. Just yeah. jump and run. But yeah. there's knives coming up through like the bed. Is not that fast though. Yeah. He does it what like four times total. Oh, she's, yeah. I was waiting for her to get I him mean, in the knee or so. Oh. I was hoping like up through the bottom of the foot or something. something. Yeah, yeah, like she. Like she, can you imagine if she like goes to jump off the bed it gets her in the foot and then splits the foot because because yeah. you know, of the force of yeah. her yes. jumping off yes i can ah. but yeah. that's not what we or if she goes to jump and right before she jumps he sticks it through her foot so she kind of like a hop and gets pulled back down by yeah. it Ooh. or then or it, she gets stuck and like her leg breaks as she yeah. falls over the side yeah. Yeah, but she makes ah. it when she finally does yeah. jump off the bed she completely gets away from him yeah. i assume it was the reverend under and then there. she struggles to so. unlock the suit. door yeah I think, it was, yeah. I think it was the preacher. Yeah. And then she but gets wait. out, and then she's grabbed and killed by... Um, what? what the fuck was his name? That, the that child guy. molester? Yeah, the child molester. <clears throat> so, basically then, the stage is set, Fatty. right? That he was. It was, was his name Fatty? Fatty. <laughs> so, Fatty the stage is set for the evening to settle in, and basically we are going to have... This, and then we're in a siege movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Where the family, like this is this is what we understand. Yes. Like, this Which, I recognize. I was bothered. This is like an hour into an hour and thirty minute movie. I was bothered least. by the bed scene because the sister was the one that told the little girl about her fear. Yes. Like, that bothered me. It's like, okay, why wasn't she the one in the bed scene? Because oh, that yeah. is more scary for bed. her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, you did you forget that it wasn't the babysitter that told that story? Because the sister So they're misassigning because yeah. the sister yeah. wouldn't be nude. Uh, then I'm then like, have the babysitter telling her the story. You know? So, like, it didn't make sense to me. That bothered me. Right. That would have been more for triggering the... Uh, yes. Yes. You played... Is, I isn't agree. That, isn't that common, yes. like, a horror movie? Now? <laughs> you, you played to the fear of the character? Like, right. isn't that just a normal thing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? They brought it up, so it's gonna happen to yeah. them. Right. But this happens to a different character. Or at least Weird. have it happen to the little girl. Something. Yeah, because she, right. yeah. she heard the story. And yeah. now she's scared of it. Although she's a pretty precocious little girl. She's not scared of anything. People yeah. dying, she's, like, running to the bodies. Like, yeah. I want to see that shit. <laughs> she, she's just like, here's sure mom and dead? dad's or a knife. Yeah. It is kind of She weird. is. She's yeah, weird. Kinda, a yeah, weird. She's weird, kid. but I like her. Kid. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I like her. Well, because like in a kid. lot of scenes, she is the one who can actually, like, basically, with no she, bullshit, she's going, call out what's go. going on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the uh, the three guys descend upon the house. There's yeah. a barricade situation because uh, there's also. There's a cop. Uh, there's a cop there because the psychologist, know, uh, the doctor knows uh, the police detective. I'm like, yeah, you should come over for dinner. And then. The ladies meet in the jail cell, uh, like Tex or Buck Tim, or whatever Tom, the fuck. Tim, Tom, Tom, Tom. And so <laughs> Tim, he was Tom, at the Tex, protest, <laughs> allegedly. Yes. And he comes home with them, and uh, everybody's getting along, and then it's it's us against the the one the guys outside, right? Yeah, there's arrows flying everywhere. The cop gets shot to a tree. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a strong ass How arrow. How is that? That's fine. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody was, Something was happening. Yeah. Worked for, for me. Sure. Yeah. He got shot to sure. a tree. I was like, all right, cool. I'm down with that. Then Donald Pleasant shows up. And gets Does he? <laughs> well, he's there because he's like, you didn't answer your phone. This is all the people pressed up against the glass going, don't come up here. They're out there uh, somewhere. Although I will say this is the part. This is what where I wanted Donald Pleasant's. I wanted him to just be like wandering in the movie high. Yeah, and I while like, shit was going on around And I him. like that how chaotic this whole scenario was. And he's still just standing there on the porch with his pipe. Yep. 
<laughs> it's like mean? wonderful. Maybe that's what he was doing. He's, yeah. he, I'm acting with my pipe in every scene. Uh, yeah. It's yes. on the pipe. Yeah, yes. Um, he probably just found that in a prop closet. Yeah. And he was no, just no. like, I'm using this. That yeah, was his. I'm going to play this, uh, that was play this that character was high. I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> because why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, and then he gets killed. And I was like, no, Donald Pleasant's no. I was expecting him like, I thought he would like shoot Jack Palance at the end. Like he would come in and blow him away. Like having realized something that his, whatever methods weren't working or whatever. And he would shoot Jack Palance. Yeah. Because he, wait, does he, uh, no, uh, Dwight Schultz uh, figures out that Jack Palance is the ringleader. Yes. Probably the one in charge of the yeah. uh, yes. the guys. He, he comes to that game. way too late in the game than he should have. They, they literally, he was literally told <laughs> that they want to kill you. Ten minutes before the end, he's like, I think they're after me. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that, he, not tell, he like all of a sudden has this epiphany. That's what like, I mean. Yeah, like they he told him the day before he's like, oh, they want to kill you, like hardcore want to kill you. Right, right. And then all and it took him that long to be like, oh, they want to kill me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what, that's what the final line should have been. Should have been not. I guess we survived. It's like I guess I really did want to kill me. Like uh, that should have been the, that should have been the final uh, line. Dunk. That's better than what he said. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's bad, but better than that. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So he's going to try and offer himself to that. No, I can't even no, remember he what he that. was. Because him and, uh, like, they're all trying to fight these guys off. This arrow's coming in. Windows are breaking. Furniture is getting pushed up against the wall. The world's strongest arrows. The world's strongest arrows. Yeah, because. They're like when, adamantium or some shit, man. They look yeah. pretty heavy it's duty. It's super strong because it can, well, not only does it lift you off the ground, pin you to a tree, but yeah. and it holds you there. It, it doesn't break. Doesn't it break. It just holds no. you there. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it was a crossbow. Those are pretty powerful. But the bow, it's the arrow itself, would not <laughs> be able to hold up a like human a body three they feet were. off the ground. Yeah, unless it's adamantium. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, I wouldn't put it past it. Yeah. Um, unobtainium. And then, yeah, or the unobtainium. Thank you very much. That's right. I got that. Uh, so the, um, they kill, or sorry, then the Reverend gets in and he gets into a stabby match with uh, yeah, he sets Deutsch the basement Schultz. on fire and then they get into a fight. And... Yeah, he gets blasted and hit in the head. Yeah. And eventually stabbed in the back. Yeah, he does uh, with his weapon of choice, the knife. A couple backstabbings. In there. Yeah, he's That's the one right. who kills Donald Pleasance. He, yeah, cuts he, his ear apparently off. Apparently, cuts his ear off first, and then Donald Pleasance is just gone. And we don't that's see it. what happens after. That. Yep, that's presumably it. axe murdered in his car. I think yeah, so. Okay, I was because I was gonna say, did we see him die? Did I miss that? No. no. Okay, good. Saw so Martin Landau. <laughs> that was a good laugh. <laughs> yeah, he did look creepy. He but like I said, made, his... face made for horror. Yeah, movies. He really dude. was. He was very creepy, creepy the last twenty minutes of this movie. And then uh, Tom helps them uh, get rid of Fatty with right. a cleaver to the back. Right. And then a baseball, and then bat, a to baseball the bat to the cleaver. Right. I dug that. Which could have been had a little more oomph. It could have. Yeah. Really I was like, could've. I think I saw what happened. But yeah. this reveals a shocking, shocking, shocking reveal about Tom. Is it shocking? No. Okay. I don't know. When did you guys get it? <laughs> like as as I get it when I yelled the, it at the, the screen. Jail. Oh, I was like, in the jail, I was like, huh. It'd be kind of interesting if that guy yeah. turned out to be uh-huh. the bleeder. And yeah. when he came home yeah. with him, I'm like, he's the bleeder. He's the yeah. bleeder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it turns out he's the bleeder. He bleeds. His nose yeah. bleeds. He bleeds whenever he kills somebody. Right? Yeah. He gets he gets more. Uh, he gets sweatier and more paranoid looking as the night goes on. He does. As they're getting attacked, which was a nice touch. It yeah. was nice. He it does react nice to like you know when Dwight Schultz is saying things about psychotics and the doctor and whatever. He does react yeah, in a way gets, that if you, you he know. gets distant. Yeah. <laughs> distant. Yeah, and a little. You can see him kind of like getting a little angry and everything until he yeah. snaps. I like the way yeah. they always snap. I, I like, love that a gallon of blood dropped on the sister's face before she's like, oh, something's happening. And yeah. I was like, why are you not looking up? Yeah, and just like, I, I'd What's feel happening? that if I were you. Yeah, but she's she's, uh, she's got her face buried in his chest, I think, you know, and he's bleeding yeah. right onto her face. face. Yeah. She's licking the blood and then finally like, hmm, something, something's weird is about it, this. Is it just because she's like in a state she, of her own? Right. Is she's, that uh, why yeah, that's she's true. in her she own is state? Okay. Out I'm, of bl- I'm blaming the director on this. Oh, yeah, go ahead. But... Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, oh, he's the bleeder. So then there's got to be the showdown with the bleeder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they finally get rid of him. And then finally, Jack Palance shows up. Yeah. And this is when the movie also starts going a little weird. Sure. Yeah. 
Right? We get back to the weirdness of from the beginning of the movie. Yeah, because this is the sensitive psychopath again, right? Mm -hmm. Because yep. basically what happens, the, the resolution of this movie is Jack Palance is coming in. They've killed everybody else, and Jack Palance shows up with a crossbow, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, I'm going to kill you. And then the power magically comes back on. Yep. So maybe the message is nuclear power will save us because it there saves you go. them. And the TV comes on, and on the TV they're doing an interview with – the doctor who Jack Palance thinks that uh, uh, Dwight Schultz's character murdered. Right. He's yes. on TV and it's like, there he is. And seeing the error of his ways, Jack Palance, well, he has to kill the TV because he's got to take out his, uh, you know, frustrations on something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then he heads off into the night and we get this world's saddest music. And it's like, oh, look at the poor misunderstood. <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, what were they going for in that scene? It was like, oh, you know, and they're all kind of watch him go. He's lost. Yeah, now. that was weird. Yeah. Weird. yeah. It's like, I was like, what is the man? angle here? It's yeah. Like the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Uh, right? It really was. <laughs> it really was. Just like it's very road. strange. <laughs> it's weird. It it's weird. <laughs> because it was trying, I thought they were trying to be, it was some kind of like, I mean, usually you're like, are we supposed to be on his side? What right. are you trying to tell us? Usually in these type of movies, you're like, no, that is the psycho killer, right? And we all Guess applaud whenever the psycho killer, <laughs> the monster, is uh, is killed. Yes. But not in this one. Just by seeing that he's like, oh, my God, my whole reality is is messed up. It was me all along. Mm -hmm. right? Even though he's killed people and helped them kill people. And you know, then he's like, all right, I'm just going to leave you now. Yeah. He wanders out the door. Mm -hmm. Sad music. And uh, then he's not so sad. How come? He found a club. <laughs> Which one? He's going club. And he's a. Uh, what was it called? Oh, I'll never remember it. Um, it's like the stucco. No, the, 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 the so where the, the sick fucks are playing. Yeah, it's where right. the same place as sick fucks. Because are the power went out on. I love the way the, the continuity works. The power went out on them during the middle of their set. Mm. So when the power comes on, that place has got them back. Like right that minute, right picking up right where they left off. <laughs> it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Everywhere should work like this. I love the idea of seeing Jack Plants wandering through a punk club. Right, trying to gain admittance to a punk club and right. going like, "Oh, this was this is something going on here. I should check out because yeah. it's crazy." I like when he's like smoothing his hair as he walks in. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I gotta look like I can blend it in <laughs> at the punk club. <laughs> yeah, and uh, once he gets in there, what the fuck is going on with this ending? He meets this girl. Well, he beats a dude at the front door. Yeah, the, the bouncer at the front door. Which well, everyone applauds. applauds. Yeah, because yeah. so they're like, oh, the bouncer's right. been keeping some so, of us out. Uh, if this nothing else, uh, uh, the movie is then again going with Donald Pleasant's thing of like, aren't we all crazy? Because yeah. everyone's applauding him. So that just you know feeds into that, and then he's just wandering through the club as he as, and he like you said. It's the woman of his dreams, apparently. <laughs> Who is, like, stoned out of her gourd. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, that's what they're going with. That she's so, like, out of it that uh, that she and he are connecting on the same wavelength. They yeah. recognize fellow travelers She's like, you in got each it, other. man. Yeah. yeah. I can't. I don't know how else to read this ending because it is so <laughs> obtuse. It is basically, he's got a gun pointed to her throat. Yeah. Because she tries to touch him. I think he's like, whoa. And then she spouts off some stuff that I didn't even understand. And then he's like, ah, oh, right, right. And then they kind of smiles and you're like, wow, he found his soulmate here where in the punk milieu, they can't even tell that like the crazies and the punks are the same. I kind of, <laughs> yeah, I kind of love that. ending. <laughs> I think it's great. I think uh, if the, for this movie, sh yes, sure. It's kind of like he found his people. Yeah, he did. Yeah. and that's well, then, that, with yeah. a gun to her throat. Like and, and it's, it, they're just staring at each other. Like they, they, they get it. They're there, man. They're like you said, same wavelength. <laughs> they know what's going on. Well, and maybe can, we're the insane ones. Well, no, that's that's because our brains the, are moving um, too slow. That's the whole yes. thing. Was Jack Shoulder wrote this after he um, after he was reading uh, books by Artie Lang, whose um, theory was that psychotics are just people having difficulty adapting to a world that's already psychotic. So that's how like he was like the punk you know the punk generation does think that the world is psychotic. So there's like this intermingling of like commonality there, you know. But there was an, a thing earlier, maybe this is what they were going for, mm -hmm. where they were at the dinner table and the guy, the cop, like throws out like uh, my uh, my mother, she 
hears voices coming out of the TV, which has a great line because the daughter's like, like, the daughter's like, everyone hears voices coming out of the TV. <laughs> He's like, no, she hears them when it's off. Is that normal? normal. And the doctor's like, I don't even know what's normal anymore. I'm like, it, at some point, I think you can make a distinction. Right. There's a but line. Maybe they're going for the like, no, uh-huh. no, no. Reality is like, there is no normal. Yeah. Everyone's so. crazy. Reality's just blurred. Yeah. Because yeah. by the end of this movie, I was like, for. maybe I'm insane. Maybe <laughs> this makes sense. Maybe this movie's fine. We should check and actually do some kind of research. How does this movie play in mental wards? Mm. All right, you go for it. You, you go ahead, Callan. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite things I read about this movie was that um, one of the band members ran into Jack Pal- mm. uh, Plants in the street at some some event or something, and he goes up to him. He's like, "Hey, alone in the dark, I was one of the sick fucks." And Jack Plants was like, "We were all sick fucks in that movie." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we were all sick fucks. That's like my favorite. He's like the anti like Shatner. Yeah. Right, right. He's, it's so Shatner of, has the same kind of cadence, but Jack Plants is the say, out of breath. Shatner, yeah. It's it yeah. is like it's, uh, it's Shat, like, Shatner and Eastwood jam together, <laughs> yeah, it is. and nobody can breathe, <laughs> and they're just like ah. that's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly what and they're it speaking is. like really low in whispers. So you have to yeah. like, kind of like lean in and be like, hey, yeah. well, I'm that's what? how he I'm gets sorry. it too. Because yeah. he's like, ah. he was very close to people in this movie yeah. when he was yeah. talking. To them. Everybody was. It was very close. Weird. Talking to each other's faces. Yeah. Because I was like, when Donald Pleasance was talking to the, the uh, patient at the, the woman, beginning. Yeah. He was, oh my God. They I, could smell each other's breath for sure. I, I don't even know. Like, I mean, I don't know. I'm nearsighted. And, you know, I mean, uh, you know, glasses. Or anything, I can't buy focals. I could not focus. I got glasses too, buddy. Somebody that close You're fine where you are. Let's say <laughs> <clears throat> very close. Mm. Okay. I want to see how your teeth move when I talk. Yeah, I know. No, I, well, I don't think you can because you can't like that would require like almost moving your head to look down to see yeah. the mouth. <laughs> you know. Uh, okay, so that's yeah, that's it. There you go. Right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna tell you after now that we've experienced alone in the dark. We're, the question you're asking is: Should you experience alone in the dark? Alone should you in the see dark? it? Yeah. Should you watch it? Alone in the dark. Alone in the dark. We are going to answer the this riddle of uh, life for you uh, after we answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor. Okay, Holly. Without looking at him, Igor, turn around. <laughs> what does Igor look like? <laughs> what does he look like? Yes, height and general appearance. And like shape. And shape. Is this oh, like we didn't do. I, I cut this out. <laughs> oh, no, I still okay. want to know. I still want to know. <laughs> we had this conversation last off, week. Off mic, we had this conversation. So. We had different. Sean and I thoughts. Had completely different. We see Igor differently. We see Igor, Igor differently. But how does he manifest for you? <laughs> how did, yeah. He's like a. He's like a cross between cuz I'm think cuz I always picture like what I know to be Igor from various uh-huh. things. So I picture a cross between Marty Feldman and then um the Igor from Nightmare Before Christmas. Do you remember that he's he's in it for like two seconds. He's not nope. in it very long. So he's, he's a little hunched over dude. A little hunched over. Kind That's of what gr- I said. Kind yeah, of a little hunched over dude. That's yeah. where I'm at. Kind of gremlin-y <laughs> a little bit. When I listened to the last episode, um when I heard Igor come on, I heard his voice and I remember what he sounds like. And I'm like, you guys are right. He is, he is, he is that tall. Yeah. You are correct. Yes. I forgot about the voice. Yeah. Sean thought he was like I was a big the, I was lurch. Lurch. Yeah. lurch was always my thing. Yeah. No, the what? butler. Right. In, I forgot. He remembered the butler. Was ever alert? Like, no. I, no. Well, yeah. that's what, then I heard the voice. I'm like, duh. He's obviously, he's obviously like three yeah. feet tall. Yeah. All right. So I'm with you guys. I'm back there. I'm back with you. And green. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's me. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, definitely green. green. Like yeah. or different, depending on what. Yeah, he's like a chameleon. He can kind of change it. <laughs> sure, it's not yeah. really at will though. But it's it just kind of happens. But it's only disgusting colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He definitely bleeds green. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, because he's got the random sweat. orifices. A green everywhere. liquid comes out of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we want to tell you how you can join the Freak Show family. That's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah. Guy from, yeah. uh, I imagine Black Jacket, though. But. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When well, we can get him to work close. This and Marty Feldman. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's when we can get him to work close, you know? Right. 
Well, uh, hey, we want to hear from you. Uh, join the Freak Show family. You can get a hold of us uh, on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. By email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, C. J. Lewis writes in and says, I just wanted to say I discovered you guys about three months ago when searching for an older movie I hadn't seen in 20 years, My Boyfriend's Back, which you covered on a few years ago on your podcast. I've been absolutely hooked ever since. I'm going through your back catalog. I love your perspectives and the legitimate wealth of knowledge your whole cast possesses on cinematic history. It's actually been keeping me away from the podcasts I pay actual subscriptions <laughs> for. Keep up the great work, guys. Oh, thanks. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Very kind. God damn it. Uh, my boyfriend's compliment. back was years ago. Jesus. Time flies. Years ago. Time flies. We're coming up on 400 real quick, dude. Time Uh-oh. flies. That's right. Uh, well, Sushi Fangs, right? So. Oh, <laughs> that's a new name. <laughs> and I like says, it. says, uh, I found you guys last year when I started with Cursed. And oh, I, li- yeah. I listen to every episode until today. You guys are hilarious. And I love how you, in depth you guys go on every movie. Hopefully, you guys will review Stay Alive with Sophia Bush, Jimmy Simpson, and Frankie Muniz, or the 2005 <laughs> remake of House of Wax with Chad Michael Murray. That okay, one might I didn't be a know about the Stay Alive Does, movie, but say, now I have to yeah, see it. Yeah, say more about the Stay Alive. <laughs> yeah. Who was in it? I heard Frankie Muniz and Sophia yeah. Bush. Was Sophia Bush. Video game, uh, like horror movie. There was like Maybe. a hand with a controller on it. What? I remember. I never saw. How it. did I that miss this? Vague. So none of us have heard of this or seen this. Really, uh, the video game I've heard of it, but I think sounds familiar. Se- Maybe I did watch it. It's if I did, like, it blanked. There's it. no bigger timestamp than Sophia Bush and Frankie Muniz yeah. being in a movie. My Who was God, the third one? Jimmy Simpson. But before you Jimmy knew Simpson. it, he was yeah. Jimmy Simpson. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we need to look into this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so thank <laughs> uh, well, let's not say thank you quite yet. Yeah. Maybe it's not true. House of Wax is. I'm sure it'll come eventually. Yeah, I would be like surprised it if it didn't. It hasn't already? Oh, we, no, but we might be talking around it very soon. So uh, Carson0412 says, I randomly found the podcast looking for a review of The Descent. The yeah. hosts are really informative and funny, and it helps uh, that the hosts are from the next town over. I hope they oh. continue Uh-oh. the great work. Oh, have like a... Is that like, a threat? Which town is it? <laughs> yeah. Do we have like a geo location thing? That's crazy. Our, we're from any town USA. We could be right next door to you as far as we know. You, you don't know, know. That, you know the creepy house in your neighborhood? Yeah. We're in the that one basement. that the uh, Bradley house. That's yes. us. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're that in adults the, whisper about we're in the and Burbs children basement cross lights the up every night. To yes. <laughs> um, about tonight's movie, Alone in the Dark, the uh, Saturday Night Freak Show Historian. Ah. Uh, MF Mad mm-hmm. writes in, oh, by the way, uh, an actor, we have an entry on the hallway of fame tonight, uh, actor Larry Pine, who was Dr. Harry Merton at the end oh, of this oh, movie. Really? Yeah, okay. He was the one who was missing and presumed right. dead, right? Was also in Celebrity, the Woody Allen movie, and yeah. the Grand Budapest Hotel, yeah. both of which... We have covered we on did. the Saturday Thank night really? freak show. Thank you, Brent. <laughs> yes, thanks, Brent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Glad I wasn't around for that. I was not either. Uh, I, but it, <laughs> I would have been sick for those episodes anyways, man. Uh, MF I Mad like says uh, yeah, that's good. The, the movie was one hell of a holodeck simulation by Lieutenant Barclay. That's Dwight Schultz. That's, yes, the, that's Star the, Trek. The, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I love all the crazy at every turn. Landau gave a good menacing performance, and a stoned out of his mind Loomis was awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Feather Pluckin writes in and says, uh, <laughs> I love it. Love these names. Alone in the Dark is an underrated classic, and I've always felt the movie You're Next co- copied a lot from this movie's climax. Some Ooh, plot yeah. points are almost identical. I can see that for sure. I mean, luring somebody out and the use of the bow. All the arrows. Arrow. Yeah. Yeah. The bow is coming back. Yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the crossbow. The crossbow is coming back. Yeah. See a lot in horror lately. It's made its return. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I haven't seen it yet, but I looked up the cast list and it's pretty impressive. Martin Landau, Jack Plants, Donald Pleasance are a bit highbrow for a slasher movie. Well, minus Donald, Donald Pleasance. Yeah, that's what we thought, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fresno film buff couldn't believe the picture we posted that showed Donald Pleasance as a short order cook. Well, it turns out he's it, not actually. It was no. a dream. Uh, Bill Hainer writes in and says, I just finished watching this on YouTube. That's where we saw it, yeah. Bill. Hey. Uh, <laughs> there is a good quality version up. So uh, yeah. It's really yeah. nice. Get yeah, it, it while nice. you can. It was nice. On the shocking dark level, it's pretty good. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, Bill says he's got a real solid cast. Martin Landau seems particularly crazed with that laugh and smile. Jack Plants mm-hmm. always provides great on-screen menace as well. This is definitely worth a watch, especially for the one bleeder scene. That came as a nice surprise. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Was he talking about the, gr- the bleeding on her face? Willie, um, no, it wasn't the the throat ripping I think with he, the hockey mask. I think he's talking about the reveal. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's talking about the reveal. Oh, I think. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, about popcorn. Sorigway says, "Love your name." <laughs> <laughs> the, wow, what a wind up before that pitch. Yeah, well, because I looked up how to pronounce it at one point, and oh. then I had to remember that that's how you pronounce Sorigway. Okay. Uh, love you says, "Love your podcast." I only recently discovered it. I've been enjoying your back catalog. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. We will. Nice. Lots uh, of back catalog people. Uh, yeah. yeah. Coming out. I of the like that. Tonight. I like to just like I want to listen to more. <laughs> uh, Dennis Peck says Colin never lets me down. This movie has a lot of fun. Hopefully you all like it because it's a very much a Saturday night freak show kind of movie. We did this two weeks ago. Popcorn. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil Gums says I've always wanted to call. Uh, Tony Roberts, Tony Robbins. Uh, uh, I know. I was. Yeah. yeah, that's too close. Well, he says that would have made Amityville three a motivational horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, motivational horror. There's a genre yeah. we haven't got yeah. yeah. lately. Because you had survival horror, and now you gonna have motivational. Those self help people are pretty horrifying. Uh, there's. I think there's. As far as that goes, there's like one scene in Stay Tuned that would cover that, and I'm pretty sure. Donnie Darko. Daddy Darko has a lot of weird oh, shit like that. Yeah, yeah Patrick Swayze's character. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. yeah. That's all he is. Well, Sean Roger writes in and he says, uh, oh, we, okay, so we posted uh, some stills. That's right. If you go to our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, we post uh, you know, stills from the movies. Mm-hmm. Sean Roger saw one and says, okay, I got to watch this. And then a little while later, he said, I was wrong. I didn't have to watch that. <laughs> I love the follow up. That's I think, great. But we were three out of four recommends yes. for popcorn. That's yes. right. I wasn't on board. That's right. Yeah, right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. It was the close. It was close. So you and Sean have a similar, uh, Sean right. Roger has oh, a similar uh, taste. Sure. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go around the table. We're going to review tonight's movie, which was called Alone in the Dark. Colin. Colin, what did you think about. Being alone in the dark. I was waiting for you. <laughs> I was waiting for you to the point <sighs> and the pause. <laughs> Jack, pa- really? Just, just, no. I no. told you this is exiting all of our brains <laughs> before we can even finish. Just, just Colin. Yeah. Oh no, I remember. <laughs> it feels like a lot of this movie, uh, which may be a problem, right? <laughs> as we go into the final You're stretch here, it's a one trick pony. It. Um. I don't know about, uh, you know, everybody's saying that it's an underrated classic. Uh, I think, you know, some of these movies, yeah, there are movies that get passed over by time and get rediscovered. And you're kind of like, how did, why wasn't that like a bigger thing or the time changes, Mm. you know, and then you see an older movie through like a more modern lens and all of a sudden something that was overlooked then is now like prescient. Yes. Uh, like demolition man, right. Which is the movie or life force. That's right. <clears throat> um, Demolition Man is the movie that we're we're actually living through. The Demolition Man. It's very um, Which one mm-hmm. of us is Wesley Snipes? Who's and Wesley we Snipes? covered that movie. <laughs> he seemed to have a lot of fun. Wesley Snipes had a lot of fun. Who's the guy from? Unfortunately, we are all the people who live in the uh, Be Well future. At least we get Taco Bell. Yeah, and we get to listen to food jingles. That's right. Um. <laughs> so, uh, should rewatch that movie. <laughs> you should every year, yeah. probably. This is what you you're not supposed to do for the future. Um. So, uh, Alone in the Dark, uh, has these really off kilter, weird performances by some Hollywood legends. Is that enough? I mean, because basically, this is how I'm drawing it down, right? Because yeah. as a slasher film, it doesn't work. Uh, as a writing experience, you know, from the the screenwriter, it's like. I don't know what you were trying to do, and I suspect they he was trying to like make some kind of statement about the state of uh, you know mental health, uh, about uh, nuclear power. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's, there's several things that there, that's going on here, and they're all I, and they're not heavy handed. They're just weird. It's like it's weird, you know, injecting them into your basically slasher movie overcomplicates the thing in some ways because the plot's all convoluted. So basically, I'm drawing it down. Is seeing these three guys in a movie together worth the price of admission 
that you should seek this movie out just for Jack Palance being weird, Donald Pleasance being weird, and Martin Landau being Martin Landau. Uh, I don't think so. I think that's where I'm going to come down. I think maybe uh, I would say you could pass because the rest of the movie is a slog. That's at the end. I was like, what? This is an hour and 33 minutes, and Mm -hmm. it felt like three and a half hours. I always go to three and a half hours. That's not fair. It was like 115 minutes. Felt like an hour and 55. There you go. So <laughs> uh, that's not a good sign. I'm going to say you can pass, and the, the kills aren't really impressive. Um, the writing is just fucking terrible, and the direction, too. Uh, yeah, I think you can pass on alone in the dark. Sean, what would you think? <sighs> um, a lot of good points there, Colin. Going to have to agree with you. But I don't want to sway your mind. No, yeah, I don't sway. No, because it's not, there's not, uh, again, I, I, I enjoyed a few bits of this and uh, I, you know, I enjoyed watching it with everyone here because of uh, 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 how we reacted to it as we were watching it. And uh, it was fun to discuss it, but that, um, the fun stops now. <laughs> oh shit! You, wait, you were still having fun? Yeah, no. well, shit yeah, just got up real. Until, up until I was having fun. Yeah, fun's, you know, fun's done. Like you know, that's that's as much as we're ever gonna get out of this. Um, but it's not like it's yeah, it's not enough. It's it's written badly. Like there's no clear. They needed to state their objectives way earlier in the movie. They did not do it. We wander around for far too long. We spend. Um, way too much time. Like I like Donald Pleasance, but like we're spending way too much time with him for him not to matter to this. I mean, he's an introduction to um, uh, the characters of uh, you know uh, Martin Landau and Jack Palance and the other characters in this. But then we keep coming back to him for what phone calls? Like literally, we will just come back to him and be like, "Oh, he made a phone call. Mm-hmm. Do you want to call the police? Never. Cut away. Gone." Um, it's kind of pointless at that point. Um, yeah, we're really just wandering around here until we finally get into something that is quote unquote good at the end of this. Um, I mean, I, we knew the, the bleeder reveal, so that wasn't a surprise. Um, it's not, yeah, it's not a great movie. Um, there's some good moments with Jack Plants and I enjoy making fun of him, but, uh, Martin Landau is doing his thing. Um, but there's not enough here. To, to have you recommend this movie. Um, now nah, you can find some other stuff. I, I do not recommend Alone in the Dark. I would rather just be Alone in the Dark <laughs> than watch this again. Uh, Michaela, what say you? Uh, I, I gotta agree. I think this movie is completely rudderless and, it, and just pointless. This movie is Donald Pleasant's high wandering it's, Yeah, it's just rudderless and pointless and it like I there's nothing worth like sitting through the pointlessness to get to it never has a payoff for your time you've invested in it and it like I wish it would have fallen into the pitfalls and the tropes of a copycat slasher movie because at least that would have like I know what goal posts we're goal posts we're gonna hit and I know where it's going and I know there'll be payoff to things but like yeah we kept hoping for some sort of Shutter Island thing because that's felt like where it was going and it just doesn't it doesn't really, nothing means anything in this movie and nothing is paid off. And it just, I don't understand the point of this movie. I really, w- I w- would have rather been like, I've seen this movie done a million different times before. That would have at least been entertaining. Right. This one just happens to have Martin Lando and Jack Pullins yeah. and Donald Pleasant. Right. Exactly. And that, that would have been enough, you know, honestly. But yeah, I can't recommend it. There's just nothing here you really need to see. Holly? Um, I loved it. No, I'm just kidding. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got to agree with all of you guys. This It was a boring movie. It was so boring. I, I mean, I wanted I wanted to, like, on paper, this sounded like the ultimate freak show movie. And I was like, how have we not seen this? How has, like, hardly anyone heard of it? Now I understand why we have hardly heard of it. Because it's utterly forgettable. And there's, there's nothing special about this movie at all. Like, yeah, we can say that we appreciate you know, Jack Lance or Donald Pleasance, but they're not doing anything. We haven't seen better in another movie. Like we're, it's not uh, an outstanding performance that you can't miss. You know, there's nothing in this movie that you have to see. The kills aren't great. This, I mean, I totally agree. The writing is awful. The directing is awful. Would it interest you to know that originally the story was supposed to be that once they, uh, it's supposed to be New York city 
And when they escape the mental institution, that they bring in the mafia to help Ooh. bring them in. <laughs> that was where, that was the original like where they're going with the story. That sounds great. Mafia would have had some way more creative right? kills, I think. Yeah, I think, I so, think too. so. Knock some knees out and stuff. You I know? think yeah. so too. When they found out they only had a million dollars, they had to cut the story. And oh change man, it to something <laughs> <else>. <laughs> Frank Hennen Lauder. Could have figured out how to do the right agree. story yeah. on a million bucks. I yeah, agree. in New York, New York. In yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I Shit. absolutely agree. Um, probably with the real mob. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Probably with the real mob. <laughs> do you think they would have listed off the boroughs in that movie too? Probably. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> oh, As we, for we have to search camp. all five boroughs for these missing mental patients, <laughs> which, which, which are right, what are the five boroughs? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I yeah, I would have loved to have seen that version. But yeah, no, there's nothing memorable in this. There's nothing outstanding that you need to really see. I, I it's it's a shame because it it could have been something great with the the cast and you know, you had Tom Savini working on it, which if he had worked on it more and there had been more t- to work on, it would have been fun, but no, there's just nothing that you need to see about this movie. So I cannot recommend Alone in the Dark. Well, that's a shame. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a complete pass. Yeah, yes. complete pass. It's a big thumbs down. <laughs> yeah, um, alone in the dark. Wow. Watch the okay. other alone in the dark. No, I don't think it's both. That's a we maybe it's a movie. cursed yeah. title. Maybe you May, can't probably. make a good movie with this title. Because you can do things. With you could do title. anything with yeah, that. Yeah, but the original set of video games called oh, yeah. Alone in the Dark, mm-hmm. which have no relation to this. Right. Which I guess is what the Uwe Bowl movie was supposedly, allegedly, kind of right. some kind of halfway based on. Those are pretty good. But, mm-hmm. you know, for mm-hmm. 1992. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Michaela! Michaela, uh, what will we be viewing next week? We're going to watch Final Destination 3. God damn it. <laughs> I couldn't just... I, I've been agonizing over which one we're going to watch all week. Up until this very moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I was like, gonna uh, say, like, oh, there's a yeah, number. Yeah. When you started mouthing after uh, Finalization, I'm like, fuck, there's a number after this. God damn it. Yeah, three. We're going to watch Finalization 3. I think after my research, that might be my favorite and might be like the most fun. Okay. So... Are we watching the Choose Your Own Adventure DVD? No, version? we'll okay. talk about the it. Actual okay. No, it'll okay. take way too long to watch that. <laughs> and it's not worth it. I I've think, seen the alternate. I think when I watched it, it was only like yeah. a half hour long. I, I've never I, seen the whole no. movie. That's oh, what I'm saying. Gotcha. I watched the Choose Your Own Adventure. Oh, movie, yeah, no. And I've, it was a half hour. I won't is there like, is option one be like, kill everyone? And then you're just like, okay. It, well, you, you can know, choose to save certain people, but they. Doesn't change oh, that. Boy. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll talk, talk about it <laughs> next week. Okay. Final so Station 3 from 2006. There you go. That's next week on Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>